what the standardization in LiFi look like at present and how does that actually evolve moving forward. <clears throat> During this conference, we'll provide an overview of existing LiFi standards uh, at a very high level. We'll talk about the motivation for a couple of them and some of the implementation options and uh, why do we care and what are the, some of the next steps that we look forward to. So there's a basically two high level market relevant standards. The first one is the ITUT G.9991 or GVLC. And the other one is the IEEE 802.11 BB. So the G9991 is actually based on G.9961, which is the <clears throat> G.HN home networking standard. This is really the leading standard for power line communications and various other last mile connectivity features. There's millions of units that are shipped globally across the range uh, with an established market and an open standard, creating a pretty competitive ecosystem for devices, which is great. And that's really useful to have if you're trying to build up a new communication environment and a new communication uh, architecture. <clears throat> the GVLC systems really leverage these G.HN chipsets to extract maximum performance. So effectively, the optical link, as you may have seen from a, very, from a variety of other presentations, emulate wired line communications in terms of link reliability, robustness, channel effects, things like that, which means these GVLC systems are really well uh, placed to address that connectivity and that, channel, and that channel profile. Another good thing is that these chipsets are pretty straightforward to integrate um, with an opportunity to easily connect various other devices, right? They're pretty well understood. So there's a lot of good reasons why one should be using these chipsets. As a general operational concept, uh, the way that GVLC works is you have these uh, domain masters. You can think of them effectively as access points that cover a particular area of interest. And then each access point uh, or domain master can handle a number of nodes within that environment, right? And then as you leave that um, environment, then you go towards what's known as a global master function or in general, the internet to manage the handover between the different zones and allow users to move within the different zones. I think a lot of companies, depending on how this is implemented, also have, offer an opportunity to have a Li-Fi controller which can help with some security and handover management functionalities. But this is the high level operational concept for this uh, architecture. So if you look at implementation, these systems can be, are, are pretty readily available chipsets that with a simple, a simple amplifier circuit can make their transmissions and detectors pretty simple, right? The chipsets that are used for the access point and the dongle are pretty much the same thing. And the good thing is that there are already thousands of these GVLC systems deployed across the world in a range of use cases. You know, research organizations like Fraunhofer for HHI and more, more importantly, I would argue, companies are productizing these types of capabilities today, right? With Signify and Olatcom being some of these companies that are doing it around the world. So there are many implementation options and differentiation against how this is exactly implemented. The other market relevant standard is really the IEEE 802.11BB. And the biggest motivation is that effectively 802.11, which is Wi-Fi, is the world's most common communication standard. If you compare the total number of devices, there was over 3.8 billion Wi-Fi chipsets shipped just in 2021, from smartwatches to TVs to cameras to you know, smartphones, baby monitors, and much more. This large established market and open standards create this really competitive, vibrant ecosystem with testing facilities and a range of other effects that create a very, very low barrier to entry for um, anyone that's really interested in doing it. And 11BB is just a mechanism of taking that known good behavior and providing that connectivity into the optical wireless space. So deploying Li-Fi on a global scale really requires the reduction of these barriers to entries for anyone. This is really critical. And in our opinion, 802.11 offers the simplest integration route with the highest number of possible device integration options. That last point is critical for us because you're not really necessarily in a position to always impact and influence the communication chipsets that are available in everyday devices, right? There's significant um, costs and complexities associated with introducing brand new chipsets, especially in mobile user and devices. So how do we do that? Well, it's quite simple, actually. Uh, you can take an existing Wi-Fi chipset, 
And typically what's, what happens is that all of the baseband processing is completed on the chipset and then it has an RF module that takes that signal from having a, a center frequency around baseband and putting it out to a defined center frequency. So for example, 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz or anything else. Well, the way that you do it with light is you take that same thing and you actually put it at a lower center frequency of whatever your bandwidth is plus a delta. The good thing is that this entire channelization has already been defined in 11 BB and 11 BB is now complete and readily available for purchase by anyone that would like to use it. So everything is provided from, um, you know, channelization models through to center frequencies through to how you can integrate it. And from an implementations perspective, this is exactly what it is. It's quite simple. So option one is if you have access to the chipsets to take that baseband system and connect it to um, an optical front end. So this is this option, which is the direct conversion option. Or the alternative is to actually take an existing Wi-Fi chipset and then add this down conversion block from, let's say, 5 gigahertz and then connect the kind of optoelectrical um, front to it. So it's a pretty straightforward way of doing it. And these don't need to be necessarily very complicated bits of electronics. So what do we do now that we have these two market relevant standards? Well, we need to continue the improvements of the existing standards as necessary to make sure that they actually work through um, the relevant standard development organizations, whether that's the ITUT or the IEEE. We have to ask ourselves, you know, what, what is the compelling justification for starting yet another Li-Fi standard, right? How would another Li-Fi standard? What we believe is critical is to make sure there is sufficient demand to increase the interest from chipset vendors for the next generation of Li-Fi systems. And what this translates into is really market deployment. As many of these systems deployed in the, sp in the real world as possible, satisfying clear end user needs. So the first 802.11bb compliant devices are actually available from pure Li-Fi for um, OEMs and device integrators, starting from this light antenna one module, which is a qualified uh, light antenna ready to integrate at scale through to proof of concept systems like the Li-Fi at home, the integrated phone, the Li-Fi cube, and many, and many others. And we would welcome anyone to kind of come in and do some of that. So hopefully I had a short video here. Let me see if I can play it for you briefly as a quick demonstration of what these systems can do. So bear with me as I try and pull up the right link. Um, two seconds, please. Okay, so you should be able to see that now. Ah, no, you won't, but you should be able to see it now. Can you see that now? Yes. Okay. And when you start, you should start it now, or it's yes. Yeah. Okay. The Li-Fi at Home family of demonstrators are the first of their kind. The Li-Fi at Home access point, also known as AP, looks like a traditional downlighter and will fit into the same sized holes in the ceiling. The Li-Fi at Home system is easy to scale. This means that you can start off with one AP, creating a Li-Fi hotspot for high-speed, reliable, and secure connectivity. You can then grow your networking by adding more downlighters, which will then allow you to move between APs and stay connected. Pure Li-Fi offer a Li-Fi-enabled smartphone that utilizes our light antenna modules for connectivity. One light antenna is placed on the front for internet access and another placed on the top for connecting to other devices, enabling high-speed and secure intentional connectivity. 
Video streaming is among the most onerous tasks for your home network, and the most noticeable when your network is struggling. As you can see here, Li-Fi can be used to stream information to your TV, relieving the congestion on your network. With the emergence of the metaverse, this means that virtual and augmented reality is on the rise. Your Li-Fi now offers the ability to Li-Fi enable a HoloLens head-mounted display. Li-Fi offers the consistently high-speed, low-latency connectivity required for these future experiences. Pure Li-Fi provides connectivity beyond the ordinary, and Li-Fi at Home demonstrates how we will connect everything and everyone with Li-Fi. Uh, Nicola, you have to use your microphone again or unmute yourself. <laughs> Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we yeah. can hear you now. Yeah. So I was saying, yeah, there, these two market relevant standards um, offer their unique set of benefits for the various use cases and integration pathways that are most relevant. A certification program is actually available for GVLC products and a certification pathway is being worked with 802.11bb based products. So market development and real deployments are that critical next step, as I said. But the good thing is that now everyone can build standardized Li-Fi products and actually deploy them. So what are the next steps? Well, I think we have to continue the education on the benefits of Li-Fi, and we would very much welcome anybody that is interested to join the Light Communication Alliance. We need you to help define the certification program, in particular for the optoelectronic front ends and you know, the kind of wavelengths of interest and things like that. We would encourage everyone to reach out to manufacturers of Li-Fi products if you do actually have something that you think could be relevant or could be served by the technology. And please continue to push the boundaries of research um, and in academia in general, because that's what makes the technology work and that's what opens up that bright future for the technology. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody and um, open up to any questions you might have. Thank you very much, Nicola. An applause for Nicola.